Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. We're going to talk about a little bit of the preparations that we've been putting together for the outdoor rock dust and biochar trial. And at the end of the video, there's some details if you're a Canadian and want to get your hands on some biochar on how to do that. So as you saw previously, I'll be participating in both the rock dust and the biochar trials outside. And the reason why I want to be doing that is because I want to, I want to test. I want to do a little bit of citizen science to see if the product claims hold up. The other thing I want to make sure is that, you know, if you're going to take my word for a product, you're going to see the results of that product firsthand prior to me voting for it. Part of the great experience that I've had is the Home Garden Field Trials Google Plus page, for which there's a link in the comments section, has been a lot of fun to interact with you guys. So far we've had some riveting discussions about biochar and rock dust and the different application rates and the different impacts and some of the different ways of producing say biochar or uh, the different product claims. It's been a lot of fun. I, I, if you haven't already joined, I highly recommend it. It's a great group of people. So this summer, the application rates have still not been completely finalized, which is fine. We're, we're still discussing which application rates we'd like to apply to each of the garden beds in order to kind of have a, a similar application rate for both the rock dust and the biochar to test its, its product claims and to test its, its impact on plants. If you'd like more details on the trial itself, please go to the Google Plus page. On the right hand side there's a document for both the rock dust and the biochar trials that gives a lot more in-depth explanation. In today's episode I'm just going to kind of skim over things. If you want to go in more depth, feel free to either read those documents or ask Patrick or I a question. So I'll be selecting four plants and those four plants are going to be tomatoes, peppers, kale, and I don't have the beets here but a mango beet as well. What we're going to do and they're, they're going to be new plants. These ones from the indoor trial are going to be planted other places or given away but I'm going to go to the greenhouse because I just don't have space to start my own. I'm going to go to the greenhouse and try to find the, the most similar size plants four in each category. So I'm going to do one control, one rock dust, and two, I guess, biochar. I'm going to test different application rates on the biochar. So, you know, say ranging from a half pound per square foot to a full pound per square foot of charged biochar. They're going to be small bodied fruit. I've got a very short growing season here, so I'm going to select small bodied fruit. So a uh, cherry tomato or a, or a medium sized tomato, a small fruit sweet pepper because some of the claims of these products say they, that the fruit is sweeter so I'm going to try sweet peppers. Uh, kale, I'm going to try to get the similar size ones and mango beets will actually be doing direct so thank you to Ronnie for providing the seeds for the indoor gro beet growing contest. By the way, still a little bit of time to let your beet grow. March 31st is the deadline for that competition. We, we cannot wait to see who the winner of both of the $25 Baker Creek gift cards are. So what once we have the plants, what we're going to do is randomly assign them to a control group. That should prevent my bias of, you know, say me putting the, the largest one in the, in the category that I feel is going to do the best, even though I may not mean to do it. I'm a human, it might happen. So we're going to randomly assign them to them. We're going to put them under similar growing conditions, similar soil conditions. So we're going to build the soil the exact same way. Uh, in the case where we don't have rock dust or biochar, the control is going to be built all the same. So we're going to add similar volumes and we'll do a future episode on that. Similar volumes of X, Y, and Z to build that new bed because I've got to actually build the new beds. And then for the charging of the biochar, we're going to do a known volume of compost and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second but that known volume of that compost is going to make its way into each bed so that that doesn't become a, a problem. The only thing that should vary from these things is the application of rock dust or the different two applications of biochar. The rock dust is essentially ground up hard rock and the theory here is it provides the trace minerals that the current soil seems to be lacking. It's a little bit difficult to find here in Canada but there's two predominant uh, brands that are, are available here. Uh, your best bet to find them is to actually go to your local hydroponics shop because they're the, the ones who will most likely carry it. Your regular greenhouse, uh, so far I have not been able to find one. If you'd like to know where I got mine in Edmonton, please give me a private message and I'll help you out. So what you ask is biochar? 
Well, biochar is this beautiful stuff. Ultimately, the feedstock comes from any organic material. In this case, it is yellow cedar. Now, I know what you're saying. Cedar is notorious for never breaking down great for building garden beds. But through the, the, the process of pyrolysis, which we'll talk about in a second, all that has been removed. All we're left with is basically the carbon frame. That carbon frame provides great a, a couple of great uh, properties in your soil. A, it loosens it up. It also holds moisture like, say, a peat does or a coconut core. It provides tons of surface area for microbial activity and uh, it holds nutrients. So what, what should happen in this is you'll have a much healthier soil matrix, which will allow your plants to obviously flourish much better. Now, there's one key component of biochar that you need to be aware of, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that uh, everyone is doing this correctly, is charging it. So what I have here is a big bag of compost. You can produce your own, you can use worm compost, uh, you can use uh, uh, compost tea, you can use a, a number of products to charge this, but what you really wanna do is you want to spend about two to four weeks charging this, which means you mix them up and you continue to mix them and let them get settled in. Otherwise, what will happen is if you add this biochar directly to your garden soil, what's likely to happen is a nutrient draw immediately, which means those nutrients are not available to your plants uh, immediately. So it'll, it'll result in smaller yields, smaller plants, a little bit of strain on those plants. So what we're gonna do in the next uh, week or so is we're gonna charge this uh, with this compost here and uh, and get it going for application to our garden. Now it's important to, to remember whatever volume you use to charge with, you also want to add that volume of the exact same material to the other garden bed, the control bed or the rock dust bed so that we can use that across the board and the only thing that is different is the application rates of rock dust or biochar. I've been working with the Alberta Biochar Initiative and I'd like to do a special shout out. They've really helped me connect with a lot of local producers of biochar and local interest aid parties. You might want to check out their website at albertabiochar.ca where they have a lot of great information and educational material on biochar in Alberta. Biochar is not only a great media for your soil, but it also sequesters carbon. There's a lot more information here on the, the carbon cycles and the different educational tools for biochar, and it's all on the Alberta Biochar Initiative's website, provided in part by some of their partners. Biochar is produced through the process of pyrolysis, which is the removal of oxygen in a burning situation where all the volatiles are removed from the wood and left with only carbon. For more information on how to produce biochar, check out the two YouTube channels that are linked. The other group that I've been partnering with is the Persino Group. They've actually donated the biochar to this trial from their feedstock in Calgary. They've been great to work with, and I would like to thank them on behalf of all participants. For more information on what the Persino Group does, make sure to check out their website at persinogroup.com. So if you're a Canadian participant and you'd like to get in on this, I have um, about five five-gallon buckets uh, additional here. So private message me, and, and so the cost will be uh, the cost of shipping. Uh, so that that's the cost of shipping this to me. And the Persino Group has been has been absolutely generous, and the Alberta Biochar Initiative. Thank you so much for the great information. Uh, so what what they've done is they've actually donated this. So the charge that that uh, you'll have is the charge of shipping. And if you need a five gallon pail, then the, the charge of the five gallon pail, and we'll get this to you. We'll either meet up or, or we'll, uh, we'll find, find a way to get it to you. So just a reminder, Patrick still has his giveaway going on for the three five gallon pails of biochar if you're an American participant. I highly recommend going and checking out, enter the competition if you'd like to, uh, to participate this year. Uh, you've got pretty good chances. There's three chances to win, so make sure you, you enter it. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it very much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you'd like to continue the conversation, please join us on Google Plus and Facebook. The, the URLs can be found in the description below. Have a great day.